Hey everyone, welcome to the Infinite Binge. We are talking about Stranger Things 2, Episode 7, The Lost Sister. I'm Jake, and who else is here? Kevin. And Andrew. I don't know if I'm ever going to get used to it just being called Stranger Things 2. That still just throws me off every time. But that's what it's called. It's got that big two behind it. I know, I know. It's just, it's so weird. It's so weird. Well, they probably wanted to call it, like, make it a plural of, like, alien to aliens, but it's already called Stranger Things. Stranger Things is. Stranger Things is. Stranger. Strangers Things. They could have named it even Stranger Things. Strange. Strangest Things. Yeah, strange. Well, no, because then there's there's even Stranger in, in a future season. See, Strangest Things needs to be the last one. Well, then the first season should have been called Strange Things, right? Sure. Although it's stranger than other things. That's true. So, yeah, even Stranger Things would have fit. Is Stranger Things 2 strange harder? Things stranger? Stranger? S- stranger Things 2 back in the habit? Stranger Things 2 electric strange aloo? Stranger Things 2 at the quickening? Stranger Things 2, this time it's personal. Yeah, that's a tagline. Uh, Strang- so we should we should probably jump right into this, right? This, I guess this so. episode. So as this we left episode. off as we left off, we were super excited because the last episode had a cliffhanger. Looked like we were gonna get some monsters attacking the the DOE. And this episode was a huge middle finger not the follow-up to that giant cliffhanger yeah it's uh should we just go right into it should i do my john machetta impression you do you okay so elle explains what she saw to becky she keeps seeing the girl in the room. Terry keeps a file of other missing kids. She sees Callie slash eight. Elle can't find her at first, but is able to later. She goes to tell Becky, but Becky is on the phone with someone telling them about Elle. Elle takes off. There's Action News 8 on the TV, which is kind of cool because there is like an actual Channel 8 in Indianapolis. So anyway, so Elle is taking the bus to Chicago because she's a little runaway. Daddy's little girl, little girl learned fast all the things she couldn't say. Mouth breather, breather makes a comeback. She calls the guy Mouth Breather when she bumps into him off the, after the bus. She finds him. Axel is a terrible dancer. Kali and Elle bond. Elle can find people with only a picture. She wants to do another tomorrow. Elle reaches out in her dream circle and hears Hopper. Kali wakes Elle and introduces her to her friends properly. They're killing former lab personnel, power training through channeling her anger. Elle finds their target and gets a bitchin' makeover. They knock over a gas station. They arrive at the place. Elle doesn't see anyone else in the apartment. He's watching TV. Ray doesn't remember them or them as kids. Ray seems to think that Brenner is still alive. He offers to take them to him. Elle starts to force choke him. There are kids in the apartment. They call the cops. Elle doesn't want to kill him. They get away as the cops arrive. Meanwhile, meanwhile, back at the hideout, Kali recounts how she used her gifts to escape the lab. Brenner appears before Elle's. Uh, the cops are on their way. They're surrounding the hideout. Elle remembers all of the people. She sees Hopper and Mike in the dream circle. The people, or I'm sorry, the police are breaching the hideout. Kali makes them hide in plain sight. And then outside, she wrecks a wall. Elle and Kali part ways. They cannot save Elle, but Elle can save them. Elle tells the lady on the bus that she's going home. And yeah, that's, scene. That's Bravo. Good job. Bravo. Great job. That's pretty much all the time I think we need to spend on this. This episode was not good it, at all. Why? It was, it why was did terrible. they do it? Ugh. This, I think we've kind of discussed this a little bit amongst ourselves before recording. This feels like it was a pilot for something else. Yeah, it was a backdoor pilot. It also it seemed like they didn't know what to do with L this season, so they did this, and they're like, "What if we shoehorned L into a backdoor pilot, so that she has like nothing to do for the rest of the season, and then she can do this for one episode?" Well, or it's like they wrote themselves into a corner when they had Callie in like the opening, uh, or Callie in the opening scene of the show, and then they're like, "Oh, I guess we have to do something with that." I, I just felt. 
so out of place. I did like the foreshadowing with the Action News 8 thing. It would have been even better if this was Episode 8. It like, would, because we well, we have seen Episode 8 at this point, and Episode 8 is better than this episode. Oh, by far. Um, did, now, a question. Did you, because obviously they're going to like come up or something like that in a future season, but I got to be honest, I did not like a single character that was introduced. You didn't like Mr. Mohawk? No. About what, what was it? Mr. Funchine? The the big teddy bear guy? Kevin, I for one am shocked that you didn't like this band of murderers. Yeah. They were so fun. Uh yeah, I it just I felt like you know, on on a lot of the Netflix shows I feel, for most of them I'd say there usually seems to be like one episode where it's like, yeah, that didn't really need to be there. You could have cut that out. This was far and above that episode for this show. That didn't need to exist whatsoever. So, do we want to go ahead and just get right into episode 8 then? Yeah, sure. We'll make this a a two-for-one special. Episode 8, titled The Mind Flayer. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. This episode was pretty good, guys. Episode was very good. One might say it's the best episode of the series. I don't know. I was pretty fond of episode six. Well, uh, that was really good, too. The episode, as we will discover, does reveal the the true hero of the series. Yeah, it's not Billy. And not Billy's dad. No. Steve? Definitely Steve. Close. Bob? But not quite. Yep. Bob. Burke. Uh, we should probably just get right into this one, right? Good work. Uh, so the episode opens right where episode se- uh, six left off. And they're climbing the, the monsters. They don't have a name at this point. The demigorgon-like things are climbing up. But then they're pounding on the glass, but it's it's polycarbonate, so they can't get through. Or can they? They they, they can. They, they, they can they get through. This kind of reminds me, uh are you aware with like some of uh of some of Arthur C. Clarke's like laws of like storytelling and and science fiction? Like if uh, any if if, 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 if if any scientist says that something cannot be done, he is almost certainly be. wrong. Yeah. And if if a scientist can be sent, says that something can be done, they're almost certainly right. I think that was Arthur C. Clarke. I could be wrong. Either way, it's a fairly. Uh, that sounds like a pretty true statement. Yep. Especially so here because a... they uh, break through. Yeah, and, and there's they a yellow start alert. killing everyone. Yes, everyone. They clear out the basement. The uh, the creatures start to go for everyone else, and Mike wants to knock Will out because he's a spy. Mike's got the right idea, but Will is fighting them, and they got to go, and then all the power in the the lab goes out, and then it cuts to Max's mom and stepdad arriving home, and they notice that Max is gone, and Billy's dad is kind of a jerk, and by kind of, I mean he's a super jerk. Yeah, he's not a fun guy. Like, I can't even say that I think he means well. Oh no, definitely not. Well, he's a bad dude. He's a bad dude. I mean, I would maybe say he he means well, but he does it in the worst possible way. Like, you can tell that uh, Max's mom is upset by the situation. Like, even the way he is acting, she is upset by that, but she is, she's, like, also upset by the the fact that, like, he didn't do what he was supposed to do and watch Max. And we also get that we also get the patented eighties homophobic remarks. So yep. you can tell when something's set in the eighties they like to throw bandy words about all willy nilly. Yeah, pretty much anything set in the eighties has it. Yeah, pretty much. Especially if it was filmed in the eighties. Yeah. I like the way that the final girls handled it, if you remember that. I remember watching the movie, but I don't remember exactly how. Was it like uh, all the 
the characters like who are from now, quote unquote now, were like appalled. Yeah, one of the the characters was that was there, and I like got in his face about it. Basically, for those that don't know, the Final Girls is a movie is like a it's about an eighties like slash movie that people from present day get sucked into. So then they're there with the characters in the movie. It's entertaining. It's a good time. You, sh- you guys, you should watch Final Girls. That's yeah, good. Uh, but back to this episode. Uh, what happened next? So Dart has malted, or malted, right? Malted, malted. He's a milk ball. He, he's a, he's a he's a whopper. Uh, so yeah, it, basically, it's Lucas, Dustin, Max, and Steve. They're all walking and kind of doing the whole making everyone on the same page thing. Uh, Steve lets it slip that Dart ate Muse, and that kind of precipitates uh, an argument between Dustin and Lucas. And then Steve kind of hears something, and he's over the arguing and fighting, and then they move towards the sound of the Demogorgons, and Max is kind of like, why are we, why are you moving towards it? And then they kind of notice that the sounds are in the direction of the lab. And then we get to see Burke trying to help uh, plan the escape. And I find it really odd that Bob Newby's superhero seems to know a lot about how the automated locks in the Hawkins lab work. But well, he knows basic. He knows, yeah, he basic. knows basic. God, basic. Oh, my God. I, I, at least I used to know basic. I... Every time I see basic now, like every time I see visual basic, I just groan and it's like the only thing I can really think to myself is, well, now I have to clean this up. Well, visual basic is way better than basic. Oh, my God. Visual basic is the worst. It's it's better than basic. Oh, my God. It's all bad. It's all bad. It's all kind to... of the worst. I had to learn basic in high school, and then visual basic. No, and then Q basic. You had well, to that's... learn that in high school? Yeah. Ooh, My rough. high school was, it was didn't have good computers, so we had to get learn all the stuff that the computers could handle, considering the computers didn't have hard drives. That's the worst. Yeah, but then like the next semester, they got upgraded computers, and then we were learning Pascal. You know that Fortran is still in use, especially in, like, uh, financial institutions because it's very good for that and nothing else pretty much hello and welcome to the programming language podcast the where we the, talk about yeah. all the languages so yeah but then uh jonathan and nancy make it to the lab perimeter and that's uh, at that point they kind of run into steve and company yeah they get startled as they're coming out of the woods but uh then we go back to the man the myth, the legend. Bob has been sent down. He's making his way to the breakers while they're all watching him on the uh, their little old CRTs. Uh, and he's going by, you know, a bunch of dead people, getting startled by some steam shooting, you know, the classic steam shooting out of a pipe. Because, you know, what building doesn't have that happen? Um, but then <laughs> uh, he gets down there, flips the breakers, everything starts coming back on. And then Bob does his uh, his magic, gets all the doors unlocked, everything's, you know, looking good at this point. And he, a Demogorgon thing starts making his way, so he sets off the sprinklers to distract it. Because, you know, Bob's a smart dude. Bob's the best. He is the best. He's pretty good. If only he just had some coax cables with him, it would have been some, golden. Some vampire taps? Yeah. So, but then we, you know, everything's all set. Burke uh, tells the others to go because he's going to guide Bob out. He's going to watch him, help him get out. Um, And, it, you know, it shows Bob leave. And, it, you know, it shows him because in, in uh, I'm a bit of unfortunate foreshadowing, it shows the pistol he was given by Hopper, or that they pulled off one of the security guys, Bob forgot it on the table. So as right. Bob's going down the hallway, Burke has him hide in a closet because Demogorgon shows up, and Demogorgon goes by, 
Bob gets out, and of course the classic, he knocks over. Did it do? Am I misremembering? Did it do like the slow motion of it falling and hitting it the did. ground? It yeah. did. Okay, yeah. So it does. Uh, uh, was it a mop? I think the end of a mop or a broom or something. The slow motion hit hits the ground, and then you know. That's and then when, it shows the Demi Gorgon's head turn around real fast. Yeah. So shit just hit the fan for him, and so he's got a. He's running. Things chasing him down, and then um, they get to the lobby. Joyce is waiting. And he makes for him. it, and he's safe, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he, looks, he and, gets and the door then, closed, and, and then they all live happily ever after. <sighs> I wish. And then he gets hit by one, and then a few others show up, and they just go to town on Bob. If he would have just kept running when he saw him, just ran to them and, and out of the building, he would have been all right. But he had to stop and smile. Well, that's what good guys do. They smile. Yeah, it's courteous. By the way, am I crazy in thinking that Burke guiding him out over the radio was kind of like while well, watching the cameras was kind of like a uh, like a reference to aliens? It was there. Did that happen in Aliens? It's been a while since I've seen Aliens. Yeah, I think so. Like it was mostly Ripley doing it, but Burke was there too. And, like, there were times at this point where I was wondering if he was going to try to direct him into one of the Demogorgons. So that to he try to, so he could, by one? Well, no, so that he could, so that Burke could get out of himself. But that didn't happen. He no, was he was, was a good guy. He was a good guy, Burke. The, the, the rarest of all Burks. I love that I don't actually know the character's name. Yeah, it's, he's just good guy, Burke. That's yeah. what you gotta call him. It's actually Owens, but we don't care. No, don't Burke. don't tell me. I don't want to know. It's Burke. Yeah, it's Burke. Uh, but then cut to the the buyer's place. Hopper calls for help, and we find out that Bob was the founding member of the Hawkins AV Club, because of course he was. Of course. Well, he was a superhero. And then we get a name for these new demogorgons. Demodog. Demodogs. Demodogs, Demogorgon, dogs, Demodogs. So, I know this probably won't mean anything to either of you, because I doubt either of you watched The Fair of the Odd Parents. But, for anyone listening who did, when they said Demodog, there, that made me think of that show. Because there was a character who, the, his name, like the name of the town was Dimsdale or something, and so he would say dim things all the time, like... He had his Demodome, and I would kept thinking about that when they kept saying Demodogs. I am a, I am surprised that you think that the rest of us have not seen the the adventures of Timmy and his parents, his fairy godparents. Okay, well, I you know, I don't know. I'm just saying, just in case, if not. I, I've seen very little of it, so it's okay. I haven't seen any of it. Oh, uh, but we also get a name of the big bad of the season. It's called the Mind Flayer, which is also the the uh, title of the episode. I really like the scene where they name it because the kids are all like saying, "Oh, it's in the D and D book," and they're like, "We can't just be going by some dumb game." And then they're like, "Well, how does the book say to kill him?" And he says, "Well, we need zombies." Yeah, we don't know. It's just a game. Yeah, it, it's it kind of reminds me of the first season. When it's like, you know, how do they get, how do you get into the upside down? Well, you cast Shadow Walk. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Will would know his weakness. And, but we can't ask Will because Will's a spy. But wait a second. Will can't spy if he doesn't know where he is. Right. So they start converting the, the shed into an interrogation and try to make it unidentifiable to him. And Dustin apologizes to Lucas. And then we get a building montage. They, two lights. Yeah, they, they wake kept, up. Will. Yeah, I was when I saw that. I was thinking about that. That um, uh, that episode of the Next Generation with oh, uh, yeah. Picard. There are four lights. Because I saw yes. two, and I was like, it was like it, because you could see where he was in relation to it, and you know, there yeah. are. Anyway, go see that episode. Look it up or something. Yeah, they wake Will up with like I. Is that like ammonia uh, or like vinegar or something? Yeah, I think it was ammonia. I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe bleach. Could be. 
but Will starts freaking out on him. And then kind of to, like, I mean, like, he's let me go, let me go, let me go. And, like, there are a couple times where it sounds, it almost sounds like his voice changes. But I don't, I don't know if it's just because he's wailing so much. Um, and I can't, it's really hard to overestimate how good the actor that plays Will plays, like, this entire season. Yeah, this point. I... And it's kind of, for just to, to add to that, like, especially since, you know, that first season, he really wasn't in it much at all. Yeah. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I know the character. I still don't feel like I know the character particularly well, even though everyone always kind of talks about him and has, they tell all these stories about him, probably more so than a lot of the other characters. But it's still, I still don't feel like I know him through his own actions and his own words. But uh, Joyce tries to kind of like connect with him and starts telling him a story about uh, him getting these crayons uh, for his birthday. And he drew this rainbow spaceship. And then Jonathan tells him a story about building Casa, Meyer, Casa Byers. And then Mike recounts the first time that they met in kindergarten when Mike asked him to be his friend. And then they notice that Hopper notices that Will is communicating, but not through words, uh, but through Morse code. And then we get a, then we get another uh, little montage of them trying to talk to him to get more, uh, like, find out you know what he's trying to communicate to him, and it says close gate. Now, can I just say really quick? For such a small town, there's a shocking number of people who know Morse code. Especially well, that one of them is a young boy. Well, but if you think about it, if they're in AV and they do the the ham radio thing... Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. I actually didn't think about that. So that seems like that totally seems like the type of thing that you would remember. That's one of those things that I've always wanted to like sit down and learn. Just, like, apropos of nothing. Yeah. Well, you know how to do SOS, at least, right? Yeah, it's three shorts, three longs, three shorts. Yep. The things I learned by listening to Metallica is one. I think I also know YYZ uh, because of the song YYZ. Anyway. Uh, Kevin, you want to take us home? I think I will. So as they're doing this, they figure it out. The phone rings, which uh, is no good because Will hears it. And as soon as he hears it, the, you know... His spy sense is activated. So everyone's freaking out. They're all, you know, they all r- rush back inside and, and are kind of prepared for the uh, demodogs to come and get them. Um, and they have the funny scene of uh, Hopper uh, getting the rifle, handing it to, you know, trying to hand it to Jonathan. And he's like, do you know how to use this thing? And he's kind of apprehensive. And then Nancy goes, I do. Yeah. And so she takes it. But, uh then uh, they hear some uh, rustling outside in the bushes. So they're all, they're ready. They're getting ready. And then it kind of sounds like something's happening, and then boom, flies through the window, hits the ground, dead. So after it hits the ground, they're all, you know, what could this possibly mean? And Andrew notes here that it's probably a Sicilian message. It means Dr. Brenner sleeps with the fishes. Yes, the uh, the mob has shown up suddenly. Well, I mean, hey, you know, they if if anyone can take care of this problem, then I'm sure it's I'm sure it's I'm sure it's the mafioso. They're going to the mattresses with the demigorgons. Leave the demigorgon, take the cannoli. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so they're all confused, and then the locks on the door start you know, getting undone. And they're not sure what's happening, which at this point, I mean, as a viewer, you know, but when they were watching it, they all, I know most of them think Ella's dead, but I feel like Hopper looked confused too, and in my mind I would think, like, he should he should be like, oh, I know, I know who this is. <laughs> I know what's going on here. Because then yeah. after the door swings open... They're like they they almost like get ready to attack and then it's L standing there with her bitchin' look and they're all shocked and happy and Mike is is uh quite 
quite happy now that that he sees that she's uh, actually alive. And then end scene. Uh, when I was so like we we watched these, and then like I went back and I rewatched it to do the to do the notes, and I was I was surprised compared to episode seven to episode eight. Episode seven felt like it was interminably long. Um, but by the time I got to the end of episode eight, I felt, I was like, oh wait, I thought there was like 20 more minutes of this at least. Yeah. It just, yeah, it's it, a difference, uh, like something that's good versus something that's bad. And also one of the things that I, that I really need to kind of, or that I really feel the need to stress and bring up is how much I really like the music in this show. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Because when, the they're, when they're doing the whole thing with, um, where they're doing the building stuff, they have the, it's this original music, but it sounds like it. It totally sounds like it could be something from the eighties. It kind of has like a synthy new wave sort of sound to it a little bit, where it's like kind of beating and driving a little bit, but in a, like a really laid back kind of way. It's like it's really kind of cool. I just I really like it. I really like that. I really like the music in the first season as well, and I don't think we talked about it too much, outside of like the regular, um, like the licensed music. Yeah, I like the all the sound choices pretty much across the board that they've been making for the show. Do you guys sit through the intro, or do you skip? Do you hit that skip? Oh, intro button? every I watch the intro every time. Yeah, I do too. Just because it's it's not that long, and you get to hear that that sweet synth music. I mean, there's not many intros that I would ever want to skip through. Oh, there are some that I skip through. What 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 would you say like your all time favorite show intro is? Like a show credit sequence. Lost. Because it's just the word lost is it? It's like five seconds, and then there you are. But no, Star Trek Enterprise. Maybe The Office. Uh, Firefly is good. Firefly is good. Yeah, I. Uh, you know, I've I've never really seen Enterprise as a show, but I've definitely seen the the intro, and I I feel like the intro to Enterprise and the intro to Firefly are kind of similar. Yeah, but I will say when you first start watching Enterprise, you hate the intro. By the time you're done, you love the intro. So it's like uh, Stockholm Syndrome with the yeah, uh, the intro. That song, that oh. song grows on you. Oh, how Dexter? 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 No question. Good. Um, yeah. or uh, I, I really, Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks is pretty good. I really like uh, the intro to uh, like The Sopranos. Yeah. True. Oh man, there are a lot. Isn't that like Sherlock is really good? Sherlock is kind of good. like I remember when. So do you remember when Sherlock the show Sherlock started? Like started after the um, the Guy Ritchie. Uh, yeah, Robert Downey, and they kind of yeah. had they they both had kind of had that uh, the same musical style there. And I I felt that that was really weird, even though they're set in like two different yeah time periods. I'm a little surprised no one has actually said Star Trek or Star Trek: The Next Generation, or X Files or The Twilight Zone. Well, Star well, Trek and The Next Generation specifically because it has that cool speech. Oh yeah, Space: The Final Frontier. Yeah, I don't want to hear talking though. Yeah, you do. Don't don't lie, Kevin. I'm trying to think of some other ones I really like. I really like Six Feet Unders. What about Buffy the Vampire Slayer? You know, I have never seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, I've you never should watch seen Buffy. That. Buffy's so good. We, and oh. no, we are not doing that as our next Infinite Binge. To get a little weeby, Cowboy Bebop had a really good intro. You know, I so I love the I love the intro to that and the outro to that. Yeah. Um, the real folk was is really cool. Like I actually just sat down and listened to both of those. It, yeah, I mean the song um, for no is reason. just really good to listen to. That tank and uh, or, I'm sorry, tank and yeah. uh, the real folk blues. Yes, those are pretty good. So the so can we agree that the Twilight Zone is the best? I would I would be fine it's, with that. I love the Twilight Zone. It's it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to argue against it. It's the best. Uh, Rod Sterling, Serling. Oh, I'll I'll call him what I feel. You, you or is that a comment on his uh, performance? Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Okay, I just giving you an out there. 
Anyway. Uh, should we uh, wrap up? Yeah, we should wrap up. All right. Thanks for listening. Uh, make sure you uh, like us on YouTube and leave some comments and subscribe and share. And also listen to the All Talk podcast and the Geek Box and the Comic Conspiracy and Mock Imaginations. And thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.